When you are called to be a prophet, you are not messy. You don't get caught up in a lot of mess. And um, he said, she said, you don't hang around with a lot of people. Because I hear a lot of uh, preachers say that they are prophets. Um, you don't follow traditions of men. Actually, Jesus teaches you. You uh, People reject you because they call you different as if... You know, when you speak the word in Revelation and they don't quite understand it, they think that's false teaching, but you're going strictly by the Bible and you show them the scriptures. Um, you don't get angry if they don't put a title like prophet behind, uh, in front of your name. I know one um, lady, she was uh, the pastor's wife and she went to school for, um, um, a mu she was a musician and she got a PhD. Okay, that's great. But we called her a certain name, like Sister Such and Such, even though she was uh, the pastor's wife. Uh, some people call her, uh, they really didn't call her First Lady. They just called her um, a Sister, <laughs> which is great. But then when she got her PhD, she said, um, uh, I'm not Sister, I am Doctor. And I appreciate if you, uh, not, not, she wasn't directly talking to me, but she was just got in front of a lot of people and said, um, I want to know, be known by my title. That is not godly. Um, you don't follow people. You are a leader because God made you a leader. Um, some of the prophets were uh, uh, Elijah. Uh, God spoke to Elijah. He said the word and he moved on. Um, whether it's a warning, he said, Hey, set, thus said the Lord, you shall die, get your house in order, blah, blah, blah. Then God, um, had pity on, um, Hezekiah when he began to weep. And God is very sensitive. So he says, go back. I'm going to tell him that he shall live. So he goes back. Um, you shall live. Um, God, you know, cause God added some years to him, but he did not sit around and say, explain why God said this. You know, he just, they obeyed God. They did what they said. He, he went on his way. Jonah was sent to, um, tell the people of Nevedeh, ne um, the warning that God said that he was going to destroy, uh, and get their house in order kind of thing. And, um, whether Jonah didn't want to do it or not, he ended up doing it, but, um, he was, um, carrying out that he didn't sit around and talk to the people. He just said it. Um, John, um, it, the calling of his timing, even though he didn't, um, he did, um, uh, he stayed in the wilderness, but he was already being trained from God. He was, uh, had received the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb, in Elizabeth's womb. And, but he was called for a purpose. And, um, you know, calling the, the, the father to the children, children to the father, you know, open up the way for salvation, uh, preparing for Christ. But he stayed in the wilderness and away from people. Some people don't want to let other people go. Um, Jesus was a prophet and he didn't stay around messy things. He didn't hang around anybody. He taught the disciples as Jesus was really holding the position as we know he was a shepherd, but he was really, he was uh, holding the office of a bishop as well because he had them under him, but he didn't see that. He said, let the highest be the lowest. Um, uh, let, let them be the servant. There's nothing wrong with that. And people are caught up in traditions. Um, um, speaking the truth, finding the words that Jesus show you, of the truth because I've heard a lot of preachers that said they've been preaching for many years and they still get the scriptures mixed up and some will be way off and it's because they're following the traditions of men um, um, having all kinds of offerings um, um, having events where you pay a certain amount and knowing that it's less, but you raise it, the prices up, you know, that's really like stealing. And that's following the traditions of men because their pastors, pastors did it and their bishops. Um, a lot of people are making, uh, men are making themselves bishops and they were not, wasn't called to be bishops. Um, when you become a prophet, you're like an outcast. It's just you and God, uh, you and Christ. Because God has a special duty for you to do the call out. Now, preachers can have, and anybody can have, 
a gift of prophecy, but that don't mean you have that calling. Because I've, I've seen a lot of them that have a gift, but they're flocked around certain a certain group or the cliques. Um, whether they, um, you know, you stare around people and you talk and, you know, you don't spend a lot of time talking. But I've heard a lot of ones just saying uh, bad things about people. You know, it's one thing when you do corrections um, for um them to get on the right track versus talking about them. And and I've heard some use, um, even when I was a teenager, I heard a uh, uh, an elder was saying, um, was, I think he said he, he said something, he, he talked about another elder that um, used profanity. Well, he said, oh, he was cursing. He was saying the ASS word and um, uh, what's the other word? Uh, it, I don't know, but anyway, he was just saying all kinds. He said, that's not in the word. Oh, the word damn. But, you know, like it says, um, but, you know, the world used damn as a curse. But um, the Bible says, you know, if you don't live right, you will be damned, you know, to eternity, uh, eternal fire. But when he got up and said that, that caused this elder to say that. And then I even hear uh, uh, preachers say that, oh, it's not more, it's in the Bible. Yes, but it wasn't used that way. You know that you're using it like the world. And now you have people making comments after what you said and repeat what you say. Being in a whole lot of mess, are you edifying the church? Are you uh, bringing people to repentance? Those people who are um, not living right, are you talking about them? Or are you bringing uh, righteousness because they need help. Those who say that there are uh, believers and they will willingly sinning, you can't do anything else. The only thing you can do is pray for them. Talking about them, that's that's really bad leadership. And uh, actually, you have to um, be by yourself and spend a lot of time willingness with God. They don't do a lot of talking, you know, if you're called, but you can have a gift, you know, you can have a dream or God can say, uh, speak to you and tell you to say something like that. But, um, having the office of a prophet is, is different. Um, I'm out of first Corinthians chapter 12, you know, uh, they always, uh, you know, I hear them saying that, Oh, the prophet is the, the, the best, uh, is the uh, top gift or apostle is the number one gift and going down the line. It's the self-same spirit. And as Paul says, and every time Paul says something, people always say, Jesus said. <laughs> um, like, for instance, um, uh, when Paul said that uh, in in his, his, in his personal opinion, he rather not that just say a, a woman teach or this and that, but you have to find out the reason. And I, I do have the answer in some other videos, but I don't want to go into that. But um, Paul said that it, got, it was not a commandment from God. Actually, you know, there was a theme. Um, um, I have some other where God has called um, leadership to a to, to women. And, I've you know, there was disciples, women, there was judges, prophets. And he told them to say a certain thing and tell them. And um, but anyway, in First Corinthians chapter twelve, it says, um, "Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, and all, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which work, worketh in all." Uh, the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with them. For to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. And it goes on. But all these work of that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will, severally as he will. And that is according to the type of heart you have or the type of person God formed you are in, you are, you, he knows what you're able to handle and everybody um, can handle everything. But I've heard preachers say, um, if you don't speak in tongues, you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost. And that is not true because even in this case where it says, uh, let me go down to uh, verse 29, are all apostles? Now that's the question I'm asking you, are all apostles? You know all are not apostles, so the answer is no. Are all prophets? No. 
are all teachers. Some prophets can't teach. Um, um, who was that? Um, Jonah, when he went, he didn't go teach them, but he said, thus said the Lord. Um, John, he um, was, well, he was calling out in the wilderness, but he didn't hang around a lot of people. He said he, he was called to do what God told him to do, uh, prepared for him to do from the beginning. Um, are all workers of miracles? Nope. Have all the gifts of healing? Nope, because I've even heard some evangelists saying, um, you know, how come I don't have the gift of healing? You know, do all speak with tongues? The answer is no. So how are you going to say yes to, um, no to everything else and then say yes to the speaking of tongues? Do all interpret it? Interpret it? Nope. Um, but covet earnestly the best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So what is the excellent way? To, uh, to covet earnestly, just like Elijah did when he um, wanted to uh, pray that the, the rain d don't come. He, it didn't just happen just because he said it once. It's a process, but sometimes God does work immediately. But on this case, it said the Bible says that he prayed earnestly for the rain. So earnestly means more than once. Um, and so it says that he grabbed his knees and he went down and he started praying. And then eventually it happened. And then, you know, and then he prayed for it to come. He prayed for it to go. Um, covet earnestly the best gifts. This is not saying what's number one or, or the best gifts. When it's just said that it's a self-same spirit. Every gift that God gives is good because it's all part of God. Everything is needed for all of these gifts working to the one body. But he has to have different members. Jesus had all of them, but he didn't put himself, uh, of course, he was the master, but he said, I'm going to become the servant. I didn't come to be ministered to, but I came to minister. And the same I want you to do, um, but to covet earnestly the best gift. Wanting to, let me close this. Um, it's not to say it's the best gift, it's, it's whatever is needed. Like there's, when I came up, there was, uh, we, we got, we didn't have the, we knew what prophecy was and prophet, but it wasn't flowing in our church. And, but being saved and filled with the spirit, uh, yes, it did. But, um, so can we do without the prophecy? It's, it could be necessary, but we didn't have it. So, um, the best gifts is, uh, so we could, someone could have prayed and said, Hey, God, um, send, uh, someone with the gift of prophecy. That's, requesting or covenanting the 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 best gifts for your group not saying that it's number one but uh it edifies a little more so earnest the uh covet earnestly the best gift for your group it i know it sounds like it means uh it's not the top but all of it's the self-same spirit um so the more excellent way that he's showing is to covet that's the more excellent way to receive the gift of prophecy or receive the gift of miracles is to pray earnestly to really want it earnestly um, um for that to happen for to edify the church or the position because i'm telling we were all filled um and some you know it's just a very just spoken their their tongue it wasn't a whole lot but we didn't have like a prophet working in our church but then we could if we had prayed and so that's um um the best gifts it, it let me see i wish i can the best gifts would be what was better what could be better and more edifying besides the gifts of healing and the gift of miracles so the best gifts for your group or your church is is not saying that it's is the is the best like all of them are the best so if someone covet the best gifts and it's all of them all of them are not more than the other everyone can't receive all of these in, in, in case of that when you say that um uh, you should you're not filled with the holy ghost unless you uh, speak in tongues, then that's just saying this, then, then everybody's not filled then because it says, what about apostles and prophets and teachers? You know, all this is the same spirit, but everybody can't have all these. So you can't change it. And preachers have to stop telling people that they're not filled with the Holy Ghost because they don't speak in tongues. On the day of Pentecost, that was just a time where 
um, the church was beginning and it had to happen with these different uh, speaking in tongues to um, to begin the church. You know, it's, it's for those unbelievers, you know, they hear all these different gifts and uh, tongues. And so they said, we, they acting drunk, drunk. But that is because um, being filled with the spirit, they, all these activities were going on, just the speaking in tongue, uh, speaking in other language and walking as they were drunk because they thought they had been drinking. And he said, uh, Peter said, no, this is that, which was spoken by, uh, you know, it was promised. It's that Holy Spirit. So uh, that was meant to happen for that particular time as they heard the rushing mighty wind, they didn't feel the wind. It says it was a sound, the sound that came from heaven as like a mighty wind. You know, uh, the, the the sound of a rushing mighty wind, not that they felt it. And then it, it was just the, the whole, uh, how you said the essence of, you know, like when the spirit comes and then you hear it and then it set up on them, but it was for that reason because it was a prophecy that that was going to happen that the God will pour out his spirit on our flesh. But um, what gets me sometimes is, 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 is people, uh, men who are not called, <laughs> called to even be a prophet say that they're a prophet. There's a difference between, and then you can't tell them anything, is, is they're in a whole lot of mess and God don't work in mess. So, um, and like I said, you would spend a lot of time by yourself uh, you would be rejected by people. You'd be different. Um, you will only, you will only, uh, I'm not saying you won't talk to people, but you'll only be uh, sucked, in, you know, to God, to, to Jesus and let him teach you. The seminary doesn't teach you. Um, the church don't teach you how to be a prophet. How are you going to uh, be taught um, how to uh, be a prophet when God gives the gift? How are you going to speak in tongue unless God give it to you? You can't show nobody how to speak. I've, I've heard preachers say, just say what's ever coming out of your mouth. What's in your head? Whatever you think and say it. Okay, I'm tired. You can't tell people. And I've witnessed that. They try to tell you how to speak in tongue. And you can't teach people how to speak in tongue. You can't teach people how to be a prophet. These are gifts from God. Stop telling people that they're not filled with the spirit because they don't speak in tongues. Everybody don't have all these gifts, but you can earnestly call, you can covet for it, you can ask God for it. And that's the best way is really what it's saying. That's the best way, but there's no one that's better than the other.